just to compare the dot-com days, uh, if you take a look at the low here from 2008, essentially the end of the bear market, and this huge bull run that we've been on ever since the housing crisis, you got to wonder when this is all going to come crashing down, right? And if you, we overlay the blue chart here, which is the dot-com run up and bust, it's fairly similar, right? We had around the same amount of of upside, even the even there was some even uh, some similar dips in there. You can see we dipped here, we dipped here, we dipped here. That one was pretty pretty much identical. And then if we take a look at the black swan event from C19, we just ignore that because that was a black swan and the prevailing trend was up. And then what do you know? We were we we continued to go up. I've been calling on uh, 500 on spy. We even had a monthly bull flag back here um, that was confirming. And if we take a look at the target. It was 500. So we're just confirming that monthly bull flag. And here we are. I think we could see one more relief rally uh, on the S&P 500. People are going to think we're going to 500. We're going to new all-time highs. And that's when we get the reversal. And if we take a look at what could potentially happen, that what happened in the dot-com days, keep in mind, we're a lot higher than we were in the dot-com days. And this is the everything bubble of 2022. Everything has completely, uh, you know, ballooned. And if one thinks about how long that bear market was back in dot com, that was around two years. I think we could enter two to three years worth of bear market on the S&P 500. Doesn't mean we're not going to see any opportunity for some bounces and lower highs. But the prevailing trend for the next couple of years, in my opinion, is going to be downwards. We're going to likely see a multi-year bear market. This isn't a spread FUD. This is my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. Uh, but again, what goes up must come down, and eventually this 12-year, this over a 12-year uh, bull market is going to come to an end, and we're going to enter a multi-year bear market. All we've had these huge dips, right? We've had these massive dips, but we never confirmed, um, you know, a, 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 a monthly downtrend and then a prolonged downtrend. We had, you know, these uh, dips here from 2018, and then we just continued <laughs> bounce right up, V-shape recovery into a new higher high, and then we had the black swan event. So again, if we ignore that. We, we didn't really enter a bear market. So I think that that is likely going to come at some point over the next couple of months, we're gonna enter a bear market. And if we take a look at the range here, what we could potentially expect, ignore the dates, just count the candles, it ends up being about two to three years. And again, um, this is a potential range of what we could expect as a drop. Again, history doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes. And if we could potentially expect something that happened similar to the dot com, we could expect to drop down here to around the 200 to 290 area. The 300 area between 300 and 200 on the S&P 500 is somewhere to find a bottom, in my opinion. And again, I could easily see a drop to 300. Just remember where we were here at 218 in March 2020. And then we ran, remember when everybody was saying here, when we got to the previous all-time high at 339, oh, that was the time to short it. And the market just turned every bear into a bull, right? And we had the monthly higher low and bull flag confirmation target was 500. Here we are just 20 points away. We hit 480 and I even called out. I said, now is a good time to start entering some bearish positions and entering some hedges. And like I said, if I could easily see a pullback to that 300 area, um, which would be significant, uh, you know, in terms of pullback. But we could easily pull back to around that 200 area as well if we enter a multi-year bear market. So personally, I'm only comfortable longing um, to invest in MJ at the moment. That's really the only, and maybe a few altcoins. But over the next couple of months, I'm going to be looking to sell my uh, altcoins, if not most of them, but probably 80 to 90 percent of my crypto. And then I'm going to be rotating that more into beaten down MJ. I'm already starting to dollar cost average and build long term core positions in, in MJ. And then I'm going to be looking at an S&P 500 short. Once we see this relief rally, I'm go I've already added. I called out on December uh, 27th. I did a video. Is this the end? Check that out as well. I said now wasn't a bad time to start entering short positions. And sure enough, we dropped all the way down to 420 from 480. That's 60 points shaved off of the S&P 500. Again, don't have a crystal ball. It's just the most likely scenario. And I'm going to be looking at a long-term short position on the S&P 500. And I'll look to potentially see, uh, I'll probably hold it until at least 300 on the S&P 500. So again, this isn't a spread FUD. The S&P 500 has been on an absolute tear for over 12 years. We've been on an absolute tear since March 2020. Well, the S&P 500 is finally starting monthly consolidation. Again, let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. Uh, I am very bearish over the next few years on the broader market. Again, focusing more on MJ. Uh, hopefully, you've got some value out of this. Hopefully, this uh, can help you better prepare. Again, um, no one has a crystal ball. Um, like I said, we had the POW algo alert go off on NEO on December 4th saying long-term bearish evidence. We had SPY go off 
QQQ, and then we even had an alert for Tesla. Hopefully that helps. And thanks for joining us on the pursuit of wealth. We'll see you again soon for another video. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel on your way out and take care. We'll talk again real soon.